Welcome to video 39. One quick thing that I failed to mention in the last video. If you edit the what you see is what you get field and you try to edit the content to add quotes and hit submit, you'll probably notice that you get strange slashes. And what that refers to is that's it refers to a PHP function that is enabled by default and if you go to the tiny MCE website and look at the documentation and specifically look at the tiny MCE FAQ you'll notice there's a question here um, HTML output includes lots of slashes and as it explains um, that's because you're using PHP and there's a feature called magic quotes enabled by default and it's an attempt to automatically escape certain characters um, to prevent security issues. However, as a general rule, as you can read in the uh, PHP documentation, this feature has been deprecated and um, relying on this feature is highly discouraged. As a general rule, it's uh, preferred to code with magic quotes off and what we're going to do as the uh, tiny MCE FAQ suggests is we're going to copy this code and basically what this does is it strips the slashes out from our post get cookie and request arrays so I'm gonna go back to Coda um, I'm gonna edit our init.php file and I'm gonna paste it in here at the bottom like so and what this will do is this will automatically strip those slashes for us without us having to do anything. You could also potentially run um, a PHP function called strip slashes from specific variables, but I'm going to do it globally. So now if I refresh the page, um, let's try editing this again. You'll notice those slashes disappear because they're being stripped from our uh, post and get variables. So that's the last quick change and um, you can read more about that if you want a little bit of a better explanation either on the tiny MCE website or specifically on the magic quotes page. So as a quick note um, magic quotes are depreciated and they're going to be removed entirely from PHP 6. Anyway, um, so that basically wraps up this series, at least for the moment. I mean, we have a fully working, very basic, but fully working content management system um, that allows us to easily log in, either by clicking a login link or adding question mark login to the URL. And it checks the database for the correct username and password, allows us to log in. Um, it gives us editable areas that indicate what sections of the page are editable. And um, I guess one quick change. I'm going to go back and edit this code quickly. And I'm going to change one of these blocks from the what you see is what you get type. So I'm going to add a comment, or a comma, excuse me. And I'm going to add text area, just so we can see the three different content types. So as I, as I was saying, we have three different content types. We have a one-line content type, just very basic. We have a what you see is what you get field, which allows us to edit things, um, add colors, add sizes, add you know additional styles. And then we also have a text area field, which is just very simple and it allows you to add your own code and basic content in these spots. So my goal with this series, as I said way back video number one or two, is to create something basic, um, something that you can use as a foundation for your own system. So I hope that this has given you a lot to uh, think about and that you'll be able to continue adding to this application and adding in your own functionality. I don't think this particular series is completely done. I mean, there are obviously additional things that I'd like to cover. Um, but I'm going to cap it off at 39 videos just for the moment. It'll let me move on to a couple other things, and then I may come back to this series. Um, there are a couple things I have in mind already, additions that I'd like to make. Um, for example, some basic functionality as far as being able to create new users. 
um, perhaps some sort of easy installation system which would automatically set up the database and make things a little bit simpler for you. Um, and I guess two other things, probably would be nice to have some sort of password reset and um, you know, ability to change the administrator's password easily. And the last thing, which I think is pretty essential, is I would like to have some sort of interface for being able to upload photos. And um, that's pretty important. Obviously, not all content is going to be text-based. So being able to add photos would be quite an important feature. But as I said, these are things I probably will come back to in the future. Um, thank you for listening. I hope you have learned a lot and you've enjoyed this series. And uh, feel free to contact me if you have any you know, additional features you'd like to see or comments or questions on things that I've covered, um, please feel free to contact me either through my email, which is ben at killersites.com, or on the Killer Sites forums, where I go by the username Ben. So thanks for listening.